guess we just bought some reeds from Amazon. That's right, folks. I just bought some ill and pipe reeds on Amazon, and today we're gonna have a little look at them and see how they play, see if they're any good. And if you wanna support the channel, hit and like, hit subscribe, uh, leave it a comment, it uh, all really helps out. And without further ado, let's get stuck in and see how we, how we get on. So maybe one of the weirdest things about this is when you go into Amazon and you type in Ellen Pipes, some of the suggestions are like Ellen Pipes, like full set, uh, practice set for sale. Uh, that's kind of worrying because you don't want to really be buying your pipes from Amazon. Anyway, uh, when you go in and into it, they actually don't sell any pipes at all. Uh, they just sell uh, reeds, really. And uh, they all seem to be the same kind of reed and they're all, you know, very familiar. So when I went into this, I had a little look at the red and black reeds. So a little mixture of the two colors seems to be the one that has like the highest ratings. <laughs> I don't know what that says uh, about them at all, but uh, yeah, Ellen Pipes Chanter reads quality materials, Spanish cane. Uh, it seems to tick all the boxes and a lot of nice reviews. So much tweaking to get the first two reads of the six purchased to work on my pipes, but then they went on fine. So I don't know, here we go. House of Highland is the name of the seller for whatever reason or the brand, I don't know. So these reads have a copper staple and a copper piece on reed blade copper piece. Ooh. So the reeds arrived and they actually arrived pretty quickly. Um, I, in my hurry I opened up because I wasn't quite sure what they were and I didn't expect them to arrive so soon. So yeah, first class, large letter, 1.60 postage it was, which I didn't pay for. It was free under Amazon or whatever. Um, so yeah, 29.99 reeds. Let's have a look. Um, they look exactly the same as all the other maids in the Middle East reeds. In fact, they posted me out the bloody white ones and I wanted the the red and black, three red, three black. They're the ones that had the best re best reviews. These ones have got really bad reviews. Why are they sending me out the wrong ones? Hmm. Oh well. Oh, a little bit of silica gel in there too. Oh, that can't, can't hurt. Hmm. Let's, um, let's take a little look at them in detail. Ooh, I could be super nerdy and actually get the calipers out and have a look at these. Let's just open them up. Right, six reeds. Uh, let's see. To be honest, they all look quite uniform. I'm sure they're all... Hang on a minute. That's not six reeds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven reeds. They sent me an extra read. Oh, I wonder why that is. Mm, the... Bridles, but look a bit wonky, and it's really quite high up for a bridle. You wouldn't expect a bridle to be that high up with the belt. This one is just straight, <laughs> straight off the sand. The sander, that one. Hmm. <laughs> so that means I've got seven reeds here that I can play around with and see, see how they work. That should be a bit of fun. And just really now that they weren't the, the red and black ones, just this, this, the sand, the uh, sawdust, sawdust, the the sanding dust is coming off of my fingers. <laughs> okay, that's quite wide. You'd expect that to be a bit narrower. Mm, but they seem, what is that on the top? Such a strange, oh yeah, straight off the, off the shelf, those ones. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, that's really uneven. Look at the bottom of that, it's chunky and the top's not, and it's, fatter on one side than the other and the bridles are off center they should be nice and neat really doesn't make that much difference but you'd expect it to, to work a bit better oh dear oh dear oh dear look at that yeah that's not quite what you're looking for really is like a like an oval like a like a sort of perfect oval and this one is chunky to one side actually there's a gap in the side of the reed there that one's in the bin hmm First impression's not great. That seems quite chunky, but a copper actually. Maybe it, it feels like maybe a little bit too big. I don't know. I need to have a look at it and see. What is that? Is that a bit of glue or something? That can't be the actual wood on the reed. Yeah, I don't think there's any point getting the, the calipers out for these. Just, yeah, I'll just give them a blast and see what works really. All right, let's do that. Just to give you an idea on the chanter, this is a chanter made by Peter Hunter. Uh, he made it for Ronan Brown in the 80s. Uh, it's known as the busking stick. Uh, so 
it's a very very simple chanter but it sounds great and it's one that Ronan would have used on like lots of recordings all the afro Celt sound system type stuff and uh, all those so yeah you would have heard these they're on like hundreds of movie soundtracks and uh, all that sort of stuff you know I just play a quick blast on it so we've got something to hear and something to compare so you can hear how it's supposed to sound and then we can hear how good these reads match up with it So the qualities I'm looking to see if the other reeds can replicate on this is brightness, the spark of this chanter, uh, the really strong like earth shattering earthquake bottom D. And uh, yeah, some of the really nice colorful notes in this like the C. And then like those sort of wild um, uh, bottom E's, you know, like a hard E. You know, so those uh, who are interested there, I'm playing that with just the off the knee with an E, and then I'm leaving the pinky on, so we're literally just taking off my ring finger to play that E. Cool. All right. Let's uh, let's get going. We've got seven reads to get through. Let's do read number one. So here we go. Read number one. This is the one that I think was leaking. Yeah, and it's got like a wonky, wonky side. Um, Seems to fit okay. So this is just straight out of the box, no messing around on the under the post the post bag. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna sing on that. There we go. taking a hell of a lot of air and I would not be surprised if that is from the leak in the size. I'm going to bring this bridle down and see if I can fix it. Ooh, that's a, quite a chunky bit of copper on that. That's way too thick for a you know, pipe bridle. I'm going to say that's like a millimetre thick. A mil, maybe. Yeah, you should be doing a lot less than that. And it makes it quite difficult to move. Ooh. No, this read is not going to work. All right. Read number two. I think the read is a bit wonky, like the, the actual wood, wooden part of it has been put on slightly askew. It's been tied in askew. Mm. Let's, let's give it a go. Back D is sharp, and then the rest of the notes are like a step down. Mm. With these, all of them, I can see that the bridle is maybe too high up, so I'm going to pull it down a bit. Uh, I'm not going to waste too much more time on that one. Let's just burn through them and see if we've got any, anything worth using. This one looks really quite open. Uh, I'm expecting maybe a lot of air. Maybe quite flat. That's something I've never seen before. Between the G and the F sharp, it's actually the same note. Oof, that's not a pleasant sound. Let's bring that one down a wee bit. That's the best one so far. Uh, just a little bit sharp, but I can maybe play around with that in a minute. Let's try read number four. I'll put that to one side. Actually, that's a good one. Let's see if I can get anything good with that. Maybe expecting the same, same kind of thing with this. It takes a lot of air, but it's kind of workable. Let me just put a bit of uh, 
A bit of tape on the back D, maybe. See how that improves it. Well, it's got that bottom D, bottom E, hard E sounding beautiful. The top hand notes are a bit flat, you know. That one on the Navy pile as well. That was read number four. Right, read number five. We're getting there. Three more to go. There's like splinters coming off this. It smells right. <laughs> it smells like reeds. <laughs> Does it sound right? Let's have a go. That's the best one yet, actually. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, I'll put that one in, in the maybe pile as well. Okay, this is read number six. There's a massive gap where the where the, the two sides meet. It's kind of like that, where it should be like that, you know? Mm. Okay, don't have high hopes for number six, but let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. There's too much of a gap between the sides of the reeds and it's letting too much air out. The reeds aren't, aren't closing uh, properly. Uh, that's a pity because that one was kind of in tune-ish. It was also a hell of a blower. Like if you got that as like your first reed in a set of pipes, you would you would give them up because it would just be too much, like physically too hard to play. Uh, so six, you're out. And then the bonus ball, number seven. Uh, that one, the, the bridle seems insanely high up for that. Um, not again, don't have high hopes for this one, but you know, some of them have been pretty good. Uh, yeah, can't believe I'm doing this. Okay, really hard to blow, but actually, uh, it feels quite nice to play. Okay, that's going in the maybe pile as well then. Right, let's do like a little cut, and then we'll come back to me maybe finding one and tweaking it and seeing if it plays any better. I'll see what I can do. I'll work some magic on it. Read magic. Okay, back again. Uh, the only one that I could get going towards anything kind of good or playable was actually the bonus the bonus ball read number seven uh that the other ones were too hard to play um and you know it's you can kind of expect that off of a newly made read they take a little bit of time to sort of to play in and the, the, to become easier to play they're really uh, quite hard blown and they didn't really um uh, they just took too much pressure to hit like the high notes and just made made it really really difficult to get anything any kind of sound out of those uh, out of the upper octave. Uh, so I've gone with bonus ball number seven, and the basically the for this particular chanter the the staple is too small. Um, so I'm getting a flatter top off top uh, top octave, but at least it is there, you know, uh, and. Overall, the reed was playing really, really quite sharp, and whenever I tried to open it up a little bit, uh, it just threw all the other notes out of whack. It's it's almost like moving the, the fretboard on your on your guitar or whatever, you know, uh, to try and get all the notes to sort of stay in tune. So what I've had to do is uh, move the reed out of the chanter as far as possible uh, with a, a fair bit of a fair bit of uh, wax temp there. 
So that allows it to sit outside the sort of rear seat as much as possible. Uh, if I was going to spend more time in this, I would definitely take uh, make a different bridle for it because this one is pretty bad. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll play a little bit of it just so you can you can hear it. So it's sort of sounding kind of like in the right sort of ballpark. Uh, it still feels a bit muffly to play. Uh, I could probably spend more time scraping it, um, but I don't really want to mess around with it that much. So that was the best one out of the bunch uh, and the easiest one to play really. So closing thoughts. Uh, by themselves, uh, out of the seven, this one was actually quite good. And out of the seven, uh, one, two, three, four were, were quite uh, in the sort of realm of like maybe it's a good read. Uh, with a bit of work, maybe you could you could you could take it to the you know eighty percent of what a read should be. Uh, three of them were just terrible. Uh, didn't play hardly anything uh, right. Uh, but these three. Uh, four, sorry, or we're not too bad. It still amazes me that I can just go onto Amazon, press a button, and then the next day I've got seven reads in the post. I remember whenever I was younger, we'd have to, you know, either like write the letter to a read maker or, uh, or give them a ring or whatever, and then you know take like a couple of hour trip to go up, up a mountain to see somebody about making a read. Really, this genuinely happened to me whenever I was uh, learning growing up. Uh, if you were on a budget and you wanted to, and you had maybe six chanters, <laughs> maybe that's why you were on a budget. If you had six, six, seven chanters and you weren't, uh, and you needed to read them all up pretty quickly, that's probably a, a cheap and easy way to do it. And just a note on the cost, like, uh, yeah, it's just less, just shy of 30 quid, change it to 30 quid and you've got seven reads here. But yeah, you know, normally you can pay, you know, 100 quid more for a decent read, you know, from like uh, some of the better makers out there. So what I recommend buying these, mm, I'm going to say it's not a recommendation. I'm going to say no on this one. Well, the caveat is if you're new to pipes and you don't and you want to sort of learn a little bit more about how a read works, this is maybe a cheap and easy way of being able to like mess around with bits and pieces on a read without having to worry about destroying your like number one, your only chanter read. Um, so like literally, you know, buying a handful of these, you've got the opportunity to like go through and maybe see how it affects the sound when you bring it up out of the chanter and push it into the chanter. See how it affects the sound whenever you push the bridle up. See how it affects the sound whenever you take your pliers out and you like pinch the sides of it. Uh, it's a good way to like sort of learn how all these things sort of fit into the into the sort of wider pipes reads equation. Getting in, if you are getting into Ellen pipes and the read is kind of a big mystery to you, uh, buy some of these, mess around with them. It's thirty quid. It's a little, you know, it's a small investment. You might even get one that works um, or one that's like sort of halfway decent that you might want to hold on to. But generally, uh, yeah, would not really recommend them. And yeah, that's my closing thoughts. So yeah, if you made it this far, I just want to say a big thanks uh, for persevering with me. It's kind of hard. I haven't really censored anything. I've just, just sort of given you my sort of basic, you know, opinion, uh, going through the reads one at a time and sort of showing you what I think of them. Uh, so yeah, like I said, big thanks if you made it this far. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to see more sort of videos like this, sort of maybe demystifying aspects of the pipes or maybe giving some advice to like starter pipers, uh, yeah, you can hit the like, you hit the subscribe button, uh, you can leave me a message if it was useful or if you've, you know, if you've actually bought these and had any good experiences. Uh, I'd love to hear what other people have found with these. Uh, or if it's been the ones that are on um, on eBay, you know, they're all come from the same factory, don't they, really? And just a big thanks to everyone who's been supporting the channel so far. It's been absolutely amazing and the responses I've been getting from people about all the, the videos has just been incredible. So yeah, a big thanks to everyone for that. So yeah, thanks very much and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.